welcome to Real Chicks Rock Presents Real Discussions. I'm your host, Michelle Dosburn, and as always, I'm super excited to be here. Today is going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun because I already enjoy my guests. I love what they do. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining and listening and checking us out for today. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood in Atlanta. We got through those bloody elections this week right come on it was now something, man. It was come something. on now so everything is like in place but unfortunately georgia has to do a recount that's five million ballots that people are hand counting right now as we speak so mm. glad i'm not having to do that glad you guys are with us this afternoon because we're going to talk about some things that i enjoy which is music the art of djing and the ladies that do it I want to thank all of the new listeners that are checking us out. I just want to give you a little background about what Real Chicks Rock is all about. We're all about the empowerment of women, and we do it by creatively collaborating, connecting, and raising awareness regarding issues that impact us as women. Check that out, right? And we do it by way of community service, um, public speaking, mentoring, and by the arts and the media. And this is the part that I really have been taking a liking to for the past couple of years because I have guests that I like that I feel that are subject matter experts in the area and the topic that I want to talk about today and we get transparent we put all the issues on the table but we walk away with some resolutions as well and resolutions is the key to empowerment so without any further ado today's topic is the women that's on the ones and twos the women that rock the ones and twos yes and that's my guest today. I have DJ Dice Gamble and DJ Hourglass. What's going on, ladies? What's you up? Got it? What's up, Real Chicks Rock? Yes, 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 yes. I'm yes. I am super excited yes. to have you ladies here today because I love what you guys do. I love mm -hmm. what you do. I love the people that follow you guys. I love the type of music mm -hmm. and genre you play. And mm -hmm. the body of work that you guys have been doing has just been great. I want to just jump right in, if I can. Okay. Let me start with that cute face in the, on my top. On my, is, that's my left. That's going to be on your right for the people that are looking at me. Hey, what's going <laughs> on, DJ Hourglass? How are you? I'm great. Like, How are you doing? Good, good. Glad, <laughs> glad you can be here today. Tell us, where are you from? A little bit of background and where are you from originally? Yes, I am a military baby, so that is a complicated question sometimes. So, but it does <laughs> definitely leads to my, you know, my musical influences. Uh, born in Utah, oh, wow. moved on to Columbia, South Carolina for a little bit. Wow. Went to Illinois, right si outside of St. Louis. Came right back to Columbia. Then I lived in Charlotte uh, for ten years, leading up until college. Yeah. Went to St. Louis for college. Move straight here to Atlanta. So I've been here in Atlanta for nine years. Is this your longest nice. residency so far? Uh, almost. I think Charlotte was the longest, about 10 years. But yeah, Atlanta feels like home now. Yeah, man. We love you here in Atlanta. That's good. Yes, yeah. yes. Welcome. Come on, DJ Dice Gamble. Tell the people where oh! you're from. Come on, where you from? background. Where are you from? Where I'm from? Well, listen, um, born and raised in Indiana, but all my family's from Georgia. So my grandmother's yeah. from, you know, Savannah. Grandfather is like he, by way of Alabama Macon. Yeah. So that's where they met. And then um, kind of, I'm not a military brat, but my family is very military. So that moved us to Indiana. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I've traveled everywhere. So I, I came back to Atlanta at, a, at the age of 19. And uh, Atlanta's my home. Um, I love ATL. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I've, been, I've been able to go, you know, like Seattle, Washington, Europe. Uh, right now I'm in Chicago. Uh -huh. My husband and I, we've been here for all of two months now. So we just, we, we love staying on the move, love meeting new people, and love building and doing what we get to do. So um, yes. trust me, Kentucky, I mean, I can't even count the states we've lived in. But my husband is a military brat, so he doesn't care about moving every day, every two weeks. You want to go here? Can we go there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay. Let's go see the world. So, um, but uh, no. So I'm just I'm Chicago. Just landed. Just literally, wow. literally just touched down. So um, it's interesting. I was just sharing with you before we got on here. Yeah. I was like, man, I love ATL and. It's interesting because it's like I didn't leave home. You know, you get mm. to Chicago and you're like, what? Yeah. So it's like, it's, like, it's like the same people in, in, yeah. in Chicago that it is in Atlanta. Yeah. So that was that was love for me. I was I was really concerned. And so I'm like, man, all right, okay, all right. You, no concerns you, for you, Dice. You'll do fine. 
You you're, me, yeah, my, yeah, my your personality, you're going to be fine wherever you go. That's oh, that's yeah. not an issue, but we're going to miss you here in Atlanta. But you're right. I thought you were still here. So, you know, the way you and your husband well, it move, just, it's like. It was like, it was like, okay, we got to go. And you know what, though? A lot of people can't do that. Mm -hmm. And so I I love him for just not being afraid. Yeah. Just saying, hey, it's time to go, boo. You right, ready? Pack right, your bags. Right, we, we got right. this. Yeah. And, you know, just really trusting God with it all. But anywho, yeah. Uh, yeah. ATL all day. Uh, <laughs> you know, Tyler Pryor, all that. I, listen, I, who's, we always talk about Atlanta. Who turned that phone off? Who was who was calling you while we were on this I live? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no. I don't but, know. Uh, anyway, so Beat Break Radio is in the building, still representing ATL. I was on the radio this morning every Sunday, 8 nice. to 12 p.m. You can listen to Good Sunday Morning Vibes with me, your girl, D-I-C-E. For all the best in gospel, inspirational, um, and just encouraging music. So you make sure you're tuning in. Good Sunday Morning Vibes, Reach One Communication station awesome okay. awesome yeah. awesome thanks dice thanks for that background and just setting this up i want to jump with you um dj hourglass because you mentioned because of your military background you kind of been all over but you've yeah. been exposed to different type of music how how would you ex describe your genre like what are you what's your style what would you say for people that have never heard you before how you get down <laughs> Yeah, when I get that question, I, I kind of tie it back to my name, Hourglass. Okay. Think outside the clock with it. So wow. just, you might hear familiar lyrics, you might hear a flip or a remix, but I like to bring all my influences together. Mm -hmm. So from the old school R&B to dance hall and Afrobeat to uh, new hip hop that's out, to old hip hop, to house music, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. So I love to just like find remixes, play something, find a different blend, just play things familiar in a very different way that you won't hear on radio. Awesome, awesome. When did you know you wanted to become a DJ Hourglass? When did it hit you? Uh, I think it really, really hit me, I think about 2011. I started, um, really started as a journalist coming out of college. I began to uh, write for a few different websites, uh, The Wellversed, under Andre Andreas Hill, who uh, led BET.com, and I was his music editor. and. I just wanted to capture the moment in time that we were in. Like in 2011, I felt like there was a resurgence of greats, you know, mm. that came out vocally, like BJ the Chicago Kid, mm -hmm. um, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Big Crit. It was just a very exciting time for me. I was just like, I just want to share this with the world. Yeah. And I just felt like I could only go so far by writing about it. And I wanted to just kind of recap and put mixes together. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing that, it just kind of led naturally to getting booked for a gig. Wow. Uh, from there, just that feeling I got when I first DJed the end of 2011, like just charged me up for life. Nice, nice. Come on, Dice, tell me. Tell me a little bit about you because your genre of music, I mean, you're not afraid of any anything. So for, for newbies, for people that are just listening to you for the first time, how would you describe your genre of music? Uh, I'd say inspirational. Okay. You know, we, we and, and just to give you a little uh, background with me, uh, people like to label me as a gospel or a Christian artist mm -hmm. now, but mm -hmm. if you if you're from Atlanta, you know, since 1996, I did secular music all the way up until 2004. Right. So my so being at Stank Onya with Andre Outcast, whoever you know, uh, the Green Onion, which a lot of people don't know about because it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. But just like, I mean, the list goes on and on. So it's like my my love is hip hop, it's, it's, it's lyrics, it's raw. But the cool part about Beat Break Radio, for those of you who don't know, is it's not a Christian station, it's not a gospel station. Mm -hmm. So it gave me the ability to say, all right, bring in the positive music that you know about, mm -hmm. you know, and then also come with your Kurt Franklin's or your, um, I don't know, uh, even now your Leon Timbo, you got your Darlene McCoy, your mm -hmm. Keisha Covington. These people are out of Atlanta and they make amazing Christian music, you know, but it doesn't sound like that old school right, stuff. Right, not like Shirley so, Caesar or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no, it don't sound like Shirley Caesar. Right, like not at all. <laughs> yeah, it's it's popping, it's popping. Yeah. So I I, I kind of got blessed with with both worlds where I was able. Now I'm able to pick music that could rock a crowd, 
and it doesn't make you feel like, oh, I'm at church right now, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it kind of moves you, but it doesn't make you feel like you're all the way sinning. So that's, that's, that's my, that's my lane is mm -hmm. like, it's inspirational. It's happy. Mm -hmm. um, and if you ever, you know, check it out eight to 12 on Sunday mornings, mm -hmm. good Sunday morning vibes. You're going to hear everything from hip hop to a R and P is what they call it. Yeah. You know? You know, so rhythm and praise, rhythm and, and so, praise. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And and that's my lane. So, um, that's that's how I get down. That's how I rock. So, when did you know you wanted to become a DJ? When did it hit you, Ooh. Dice? You know, it's crazy because uh, Sean Garvey and shout out to you, Sean, asking me to uh, come along and be with the team on Beat Break Radio two years ago. Now, um. I've always loved music. I yeah. wanted to be the DJ, but nobody put any respect on my name. And so one, <laughs> one day, um, he, the crazy part about it is I interviewed with Sean tw 12 years prior to mm -hmm. him asking me to come along and be a part of his, his thing. And I was like, man, I've been wanting to do this for years now, but I just never had a platform or never felt like there was space for me in that genre. You know, like, who's going to listen to you? You know, like right. you got all the all the Christian radios on lockdown, you know, and especially in Atlanta. Are you serious? So right. nobody, nobody going to want to listen to you. But, you know, we kind of made our little space, you know, that little lane where you don't hear this on the radio. You don't know about this artist from Europe. You know, it's like and I get to play that. So it's just been like a year of really saying, who do I know? Who has that fire and who hasn't heard it? Mm -hmm. And that's that's been my little bubble right there. So. I'm just kind of bridging the gap, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. even people who don't even have a faith, don't believe in God, don't even care. Like they'll listen to the station because yeah. they're like, that made me feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know why it made me feel good, but it, I like that. You no, know? no, it's it a kinda, good thing because you're making yeah, a difference. Kinda, that's yeah, what it, it is. It uplifted me. So that's, so that's my, that's my, that's my DJ zone right there. Yeah. Yeah. DJs yeah, yeah. make impacts. You know what I'm saying? You guys yeah. have the ability to move a crowd, change the temperature, the mm -hmm. setting in the space. You can make us cry. You can make us laugh. You can make us dance. You can make us reminisce. Mm -hmm. um, you make us sing. You know, mm -hmm. you make us make us feel like we're artists. Every time you play, we want to party and have a good time or we can mm -hmm. be reflective. So, you know, you guys have the keys mm -hmm. to move us around. You guys are like puppeteers, if you will, with yeah. music. Right. Right. Uh, OK. Our class is it. laughing. She's smiling. I love yeah. It. You yeah, guys are puppeteers, like, you know, and if you're like if you're not thing. feeling it, if you're in the space and if you're not feeling it, that translates just like oh, a I chef who's it. cooking. Right. If he or she is not feeling it, all of that mm -hmm. emotion goes into the food and you sense that. So we feel yeah. the vibe wherever yeah. you are. And, and oftentimes, sometimes you guys are tired. You guys did like a, a gig the night before, maybe you're not really oh. feeling it. And sometimes the energy from the crowd just makes you want to be in the space with us. And then it's an experience yeah. that's unforgettable. Like in the green yeah. space, in the green room, we were talking about just doing festivals and I'm gonna come to that in a minute. But okay. um, Hourglass, I wanted to ask you, what are your musical influences? Cause you seem to be, you seem to be a nice, young, vibrant young person, but oh, yet your you. span of music can touch, you know, the older generation as well as the newer kids or people in your age demographic. So what music, who influences you musically? Oh, I mean, you can see I have a lot of different types yeah, of vinyl trying, on the wall behind. I'm trying to see on the back. Yeah, I'm so, trying to see. Yeah, of course, got Outkast. Yeah, see, uh, uh -huh. I think they were they were definitely major being from the South. Right. And just mm -hmm. seeing someone doing something different, the whole Dungeon family. Uh, pretty much in innovative artists, no matter what genre they were in. Right. Like, my first concert was a Kirk Franklin concert, wow. and I lost my mind. I was so excited. <laughs> like, I've never seen nothing like this before. And his music was so controversial back yeah. in the 90s when yeah. I was growing up. And, mm -hmm. and um, But, yeah, from alternative artists like uh, Krong Ben behind me, I got Megan Thee Stallion next to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alex Isley for when I want to, like, be sad or yeah. just go to sleep and, yeah. like, Vibe yeah. out, Moonchild, Janet. I saw the so, Moonchild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moonchild so, is hot. So Missy, Missy Elliott for sure. The Neptunes, <sighs> Timbaland, mm -hmm. Buster Rhymes, Tribe mm -hmm. Called Quest. Like all of the artists, I felt like really like, like when you know that when they leave, they left a real yeah like, vivid mark and yeah. generations of artists that were influenced by them. So mm -hmm. those you, are the core. Do you happen to play a musical instrument as well? 
No, I don't. Mm. That's that's something I definitely want to take up on. And I've <laughs> I've been told by um by a lot of my musician friends I'll do a, a gig with them and they'll be like, You're wasting your ear. Like mm. not wasting per se through yeah. DJing, but yeah. saying that you should be producing, you should mm. be adding mm. on to these things because yeah. you have a gift. Right. and how you hear things right mm. that right. is that is on the list yeah absolutely. in 2021 to like start producing some stuff yeah i've done a few done a few records mainly remixes um thanks to shantae khan like uh, yeah. my team work yeah yeah my team yeah, work yeah. uh we have uh we've put out three remix projects usually i'm on the, on the a and r side mm -hmm. gathering them up but i you know thankfully did one for her project and awesome. getting into it getting into it a lot more i uh, want to experiment vocally as well i've been doing a little bit of that on my streams think outside the clock where i might sing a little bit with the music oh. add a little effect so i'm just trying to expand <laughs> and you know just be the artist that's in me i know that's right yeah, yeah because you it does you no good if you check out of here with all the gifts and you didn't express it you got to get it exactly. all out and that's what my name's about right yeah so you gotta, gotta get it all out come on hourglass get it on out dice <laughs> baby girl come on who influences you i mean you can tell me the before the after the now i know it's a lot of people i know you mentioned oh, outcast is anybody mm. else that mu influence you musically well let me just keep it real with you okay. indiana did not uh do me any justice concerning <laughs> hip-hop and r&b uh -huh. however what they did you know, Hourglass was talking about instrumentation and people saying, hey, you're not using this, that, and the third. But my whole family grew up in the church. Everybody played it. I, I played a guitar. I suck at it, but but it's here. And okay. I, I play it every now and again. Okay. I want to pick up the piano. But um, everything from an ACDC to a Salt and Pepper Come to on. a um, Gladys Knight to a The Temptations, like my uh, mom loved jazz she loved the blues so i'm talking about ray charles and i'm busted like songs that original rap songs that people have never ever right. heard of right. and then um obviously when you're in the a like coming to at i came to atlanta right during the uh jermaine dupree and i say mm. dj jermaine dupree almost said that because mm, that was yeah. what he was known Do, for yeah, yeah so it's like yeah um definitely uh people are, always want to say chris uh, Ludacris, but it was Chris Lover Lover and Poon Daddy. Yes, right. DJ Oom. So it's like I came yeah. along during the time where music was okay. It was okay to be the artist that you were. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to. Uh, it, it wasn't about the money. It was about you just being dope and, and your self-expression. So uh, definitely all the hip-hop artists. And then, like I said, shout out. Honestly, the Sea Room is my my guideline when I play music on the radio each week. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you if you don't sound like a Keisha Covington, a Chris Lewis, a Leon Timbo, a Darlene McCoy, if you don't sound like a local favorite, mm -hmm. who who has, I mean, who has totally shut down the circuit, mm -hmm. mm, I, pro I probably won't play you. Just be real. I'm just keeping it. Yeah. Honestly, I yeah. test people. I test when I meet new. This is off the subject, but when I meet people, I test them of their knuck if you buck. You don't know where that song came from. We can't be friends. Like it's <laughs> it's it's just like this thing about Atlanta that it just kind of set the standard for me with music. Mm -hmm. And I think people never respected Atlanta mm -hmm. in the way that they should have. Mm -hmm. It was always L.A., New York. L.A., New York, Florida. You want to go to uh, 95 South? Mm -hmm. You know, when it went whoop, there it is. Now we battling because we got two groups with the same song. Right. It was like ATL, and I'm, and this is my rant. There's no place better because you get, <laughs> you get, you get everything. Uh -huh. Like you could go to the West Coast, get that West Coast flavor. AMG. I'm old school. You know what I'm saying? The Waskles. Y'all don't know nothing about these people because I'm old. But the point is, there was a limit to what you could get out of the other states right. but not in not in Atlanta. Mm. It was like Atlanta was so open mm -hmm. and welcoming mm -hmm. even to me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm on hot 90 uh, uh seven stages. They didn't know me, but mm -hmm. it was the fact me and my crew rolled so deep. Right. We had every we had every freak nick just trying to you know, we just trying to get it in. Mm -hmm. The love, they shared the love. Right. It was never like you can't come here and do that. Yeah. It was kind of like, no, nah, come here to the tabernacle and do that. Mm -hmm. Like 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 like, like we want to hear what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. And so that's why I'm like, put some respect on Atlanta. But anywho, so Atlanta is a heavy influence for me. Mm -hmm. Even even when it comes to gospel, I'm like, 
about uh, the DMV, this, the D. I'm like, I love you, DMV, but you come to the A on God. Oh, my Bishop, Bishop C.L. Carter, First Missionary Baptist Church, I promise you, you're going to have to bring it. Like in the Christian realm or even in the hip hop realm, you're going to have to bring it. Yeah. Like, like it's a different energy, you know, it's, and they, I think the energy is more pure and it's no disrespect to every other place, but there's just something about Atlanta where the love is love. Mm-hmm. And I, and, and mm-hmm. so that's how I lead. That's my music. That's my genre. Mm-hmm. So if you're, if your music shouts love, I'm going to play that, okay. you know, like that's, that's what's going to get airplay first. Okay. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, for, okay. for sure. All right. Hourglass, you agree? You agree? I see you shaking your head. hundred percent. I do think that Atlanta is is magic. Mm. Um, (laughs) She said magic. It really is. And and how you're saying that, you know, Atlanta was a place for everyone, I I believe it absolutely still is. Mm. And Mm -hmm. that's the mission of me and work crew is to kind Mm -hmm. of lead in the emerging artists that are popping up in the city and Mm -hmm. give them platforms, support them as much as Mm -hmm. we can. Because, Mm -hmm. yeah, there's so much talent here. And mm-hmm. because of those incredible movements, Atlanta is literally the epicenter. Everywhere I travel, whether it could be small time, small town, whether I go to Europe, whether I go to New York, go to mm-hmm. L.A., they are excited as soon as they mm-hmm. hear Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, period. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And, and but yeah, to that to that, it's like, you know, the R&B movements the crunk mu- movements, the trap music, mm-hmm. yeah. there's mm-hmm. house movements, there's yeah, international right there. community movements, now. like you're mm-hmm. saying, in the Christian realm, it's mm-hmm. like, you won't mm-hmm. get there that anywhere. Mm-hmm. Nowhere. Mm-hmm. Nowhere else. Nowhere else. Let me ask you, Hourglass, um, have you always DJ with the work crew when you first started to DJ, or you eventually, how did you get with them? No, Tell me a little I bit was about a, that. I was a lone wolf, but um, yeah, I first started DJing at, uh, in College Park, Georgia, at my friend's store, uh, Poor Little Rich Girl. Oh. Um, it was like, I was just, you know, they're selling vintage clothes. <laughs> I was just practicing, learning, getting my little oh. money, like my first little $50 to oh. figure myself out. and. Um, one day they, they opened up a second store that was a few few steps away and DJ Princess Cut was spinning in that room. Okay. And she is definitely like I would consider a mentor, especially just teaching me as a woman how right. to um, how to move, yeah. how to communicate with people. Yeah. And she kind of, you know, she looked out for me. She just said, Hey, Whenever you're in town, because I was still back and forth in Charlotte Mm -hmm. at the time, she's just like, whenever you're in town, let me know. You can come with me. She took me to the college park, like Fourth of July picnics, Uh where Two Chains and Waka are just hanging around and (laughs) having me DJ on her bathroom or or smoke breaks or whatever, you know. And um, to um, taking me to Lennox to DJ Neiman Marcus, I still substitute for her sometimes. To the W's, to uh, this ultra lounge in the south side where all yeah. they want to hear is Jeezy and Shadi Low to, you know, to eventually uh, her being the first uh, woman DJ uh, to have a residency at Onyx Strip Club. Mm-hmm. So I was her assistant. I would run the lights. I would uh, keep tab of the money, keep tab of the dance, okay. try to keep the peace. And, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, if you hear my sets, it's the farthest thing from that for the most part. Mm-hmm. But I learned so much from her just about interacting especially dealing with men in those spaces yeah. there are a lot yeah. of predators you know yeah um, i came across a lot of predatory behavior when i first started um and i always felt like i was still looking for my tribe even mm-hmm. though i had her to support me right i would you know i felt like i was just different in just the way i i presented my my music and luckily i have a friend a singer in it by the name of Brittany dion she's amazing um and she was friends with Xavier Black, mm-hmm. uh, the founder, co-founder of the work crew. Yes. And in 2014, um, she had a showcase, and I was her DJ, and Xavier helped her get the space. This was on Edgewood, a uh, department store. Yes. Um, very early. Uh-huh. The department store when it was, it was a magical place. It was magical, yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he saw me DJ. I was doing a soul primarily soul set but playing a lot of the edits and remixes I could dig up on SoundCloud and and he you know it's just like yo I like what you're playing I ended up giving him the wrong number on accident I think I fudged a digit and I stayed and watched him and uh, Jeremy Avalon uh, who are now my big brothers in the game they I watched them DJ after she she got done performing and my eyes lit up I finally was like 
you guys know about La Kim, K. Chinata, you know about Selection, you know about, but you're still playing Atlanta. Yeah. You're still playing, yeah. like, you know, yeah, Atlanta yeah. bass music, and you're still blending in house. And yeah. And tall, and I was just, I was just so happy. Jersey Club, like, everything. And yeah. So once I met them, you know, he ended up following up with me, finding me through SoundCloud, like, I think your number was wrong. And then from there, you know, instead of a lot of the guys who came up to me, like, kind of looking at me like, hmm, you know, I can, I can turn you into something, girl, <laughs> that kind of vibe. I had DJs legitimately, you know, ask me when my next gig was going to be so they can come out and check me out. And I tell them, and they'd be like, oh, I'm busy. They didn't even, they didn't even think about uh, the date. I'm busy, but what I will do, I'll come to your house, you know, <gasps> you need to just get me some like a little six pack and da 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 and I can watch you work and I was like I don't need you. What? You know? what? And I don't want you to do that. No, it wasn't going yeah. down like that. Yeah, so I got approached like that by a lot of people. I won't name them. No, Some you don't more, have to, but know? my mouth is but, open. It's hitting the like, table like what? Yeah, so so yeah, so to be approached by Xavier, I was a little on guard definitely, mm -hmm. but his first move wasn't that it yeah. was oh come by the house meet my wife right meet my mm -hmm. daughter right have mm -hmm. dinner let's talk i want to know who you are as a person right come on and now we um you know i dj'd a little bit and he booked me on a gig killed it and then just over the next uh, year and a half i would appear on a few work crew events but i um I wasn't part of the collective. I was still just kind of doing my thing. Yeah. And I offered my services on the business aspect because yeah. um, I have a marketing background. And I just wanted to help what they had going on. Mm. I felt like they were building something yeah. that just made yeah. me excited. And naturally, um, you know, I was added to the DJ roster Shouts as well. Shout out to them, to Jeremy and Xavier, man. Yes. They came at you the right way. Stand but up men. Still. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Real, real men supporting real chicks. We love that because it I is some that. slimy people out here. And yeah, I'm sure the on ones now. that was trying to slime at you probably had nothing. You know what I mean? They nothing. was just trying to right. just slime in and just slime out you know they didn't even understand me you know what i mean that. and wasn't yeah. really trying to either yeah mm. wow awesome fantastic story come on dice tell me what's going on with you what happened with you how did you know you know with your musical influences and things like that how did you find your tribe were you did you did it always when you first started DJing, were you solo and then you found your tribe? Did they see you and you guys connect? How did you find your people in this in this industry? I'll be honest with you. Um, from traveling the world, uh -huh. I knew I knew so many people, and I mean from every type of genre. So I had always wanted to have a platform where I could, you know share them with other people right and i and I never had that, you know, until Sean was like, Hey, Dice, I want to uh, do this show. You know, like, uh -huh. what do you think? You know, could, do you think you could do you think you could do it? And I was sitting here like, bruh, he has no idea the music that I have. Like, he, he had no clue. But the fact he was like, I want to make sure we have something inspirational mm -hmm. on our, uh, in our, you know, on our set mm -hmm. within our within our roster. And I was like, bruh, you asked the right person, somebody who I'm not going to be biased, you know, I'm going to listen to the music and I'm not going to play anything that's not worth playing. Mm -hmm. And so I've always, okay, house parties, I have a record player. Like it is, a, it is not a game, like a nice. record player, not, not, not this, not the equipment. I'm talking about old school. So, <laughs> you know, we would, we would always entertain when we had parties and I was like, man, this is pretty cool. But I never thought that I could put DJing in my life. Not, not realizing that music was already my life. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it kind of, you know, and I don't know how DJ Hourglass feels. I don't know if, you know, you were into music before, but shout out mm -hmm, to Shantae. Sure. Con hey, Shantae's yes. my sister. You, wow. tell her, you tell her Dice, say hello. Okay, like, yeah. Ah, you know I'm supposed to. But <laughs> listen, that's, that's my sister. But um, that's my life. Like, mm -hmm. music is my life. So it just kind of, when the, when the opportunity knocked and I was ready, it, w it just connected. It was like, duh, like this is what you yeah. do. You do this all day, but nobody else knows that you do it. Mm. So giving me a four hour block to say, all right, these are people you may not know. You know, you probably never heard this before. Like, but I want to share them with you. You know, I want to connect them with you. Like it was just opportunity two years ago. Like mm -hmm. 
I've been an artist, a rapper, you know, I've been writing, I have, I've written uh, for other people's projects. Uh, we have songs in movies, you know, it's like doing all the other stuff, but I never thought that um, I would have a space where people would actually listen, mm. which is, which is weird as an art. Like I know I can get on stage and you listen to me cause I'm gonna command that. Right. But it was, I did, I just never thought that man, like, listen, you have an ear, you've heard stuff that people have never heard. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is put that together and, and let them hear it, you yeah. know? And to your point earlier, you was like, yeah, you, you guys have the power to move us. Yes. And, and yeah, people gonna holler at hourglass cause it's it's the energy there when you can control yeah. people's emotions. When you when you have that ability to kind of take them from thought to thought, there's a love that exists. It's just like, oh, mm -hmm. oh. Is it, it's just mm -hmm. it's just that yeah. draw. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that I wasn't looking for that. It just happens to be a part of the part of the thing I get to do now. Right. You know, where it's right. like yes, yeah, it's, it's another title that I get to be respected for. And other art, it's a, it's a launching pad for artists. So DJs are the one that launch artists. Yes. Everybody knows this. Like, yes, yes, if you, if, hey, DJ, I don't care. You could think you could be on the radio all day, but if DJs aren't playing you at the parties, the skating rinks, online, nobody is going to that know who you are. And so as an artist, I gained the love for the DJ. So, and a respect for the DJ, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes I just was paying the DJ, like, please, $20, play yeah. my album, baby. You know, so I was like, <laughs> I know that the DJ is like super important in the world yeah. concerning music. Yes. So, so now that I'm on the other side of that, I take it a little more seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hmm, okay. You know, like it just, it just changes my perspective and I, and I'm grateful that I get to do it right now. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. I'm, and I'm grateful you do it too. Before we actually met through beat break radio, uh -huh. I think I, you know, I might've slid in your DM and just said, thank you um, for mm -hmm. the music that you play on Sunday because tears would roll down my face. It was so inspirational and so powerful mm -hmm. and it, the way you select the yeah. records, the music, the timing of it, how mm -hmm. it crescendos one after another. It just mm -hmm. sets a it sets a mood. And during this mm -hmm. time where most of us cannot go to a place of worship, right? Mm -hmm. Music is mm -hmm. the vehicle that helps us get close to our spirituality and be mm -hmm. in touch with our creator. So mm -hmm. you you become ministers, you know, you become a, a, mm -hmm. a person or a space or a place where we can mm -hmm. get in touch with those feelings that we may have put in the back of our mind Monday through Friday because we're hustling, we're doing what mm -hmm. we're doing. We're so concerned with what's being rammed down our throat through media. But then mm -hmm. when we have this opportunity, whether we listen to Hourglass and she makes us dance or makes mm -hmm. us think about songs we haven't heard in a long time versus you and you you make us feel a, a certain way where we just feel like there's a cleansing or a purging through mm -hmm. music. It's a beautiful sense of power. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate good. you ladies for not being yeah. arrogant or being mm -hmm. big in the space or boisterous. Like you guys mm -hmm. are very humble about the power that you have because oftentimes, mm -hmm. sometimes people are maestros, right? And they get comfortable. They play what they like. Mm -hmm. yeah. They uh, play in a, a familiar space. Maybe their creative juices are not flowing, so they feel a little limited. But mm -hmm. shouts out to you and to the many others that take us on a journey. Every sure. time yes. you That's play, good. every time you play a record, every time you tell a story, you share. Sometimes you share your vulnerabilities with us and we don't even know, but we yeah. feel it, right? Whether it's yeah. through a slow yeah. song, an R&B yeah. song, a praise and worship song, a hip hop song, whatever it is. And so that's why I tip my hat to you and the hundreds of others that I know that do it and mm -hmm. take it really serious and really love mm -hmm. it because there's mm -hmm. so much music out there. And the fact mm -hmm. that you guys take the time to curate it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you get ready to get down with us. Mm -hmm. You're curating ideally which, where you may want to go, what you want to do. And, and, mm -hmm. and that's appreciated versus I'm just going to come in here cold and do what I want to do, right, you know what yeah. I mean? And then you end up playing some stuff that one, we didn't want to hear, two, we heard it before, <laughs> we know exactly what you, three, we know yeah, exactly how you're going to transition to the next <laughs> thing. Like, yo, get out of here. Like, I'm out. Like, yeah. if you're not going to respect the fact for my time and my money, I have no right. problem taking my purse and my keys and I walk out. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? That's and that's what it is. So thank you so much for doing that. I want to ask mm -hmm. you ladies, because again, we're in this shelter in place. Shout out mm -hmm. to Ross Sirius, because Ross Sirius yeah. connect me to Hourglass and she couldn't be here today because fortunately mm -hmm. she has a gig. But I know during this whole COVID-19 space, has things really like er, slowed down or are people mm -hmm. still asking for you and you're Zooming a lot more, Skyping? What do you, mm -hmm. what, how's your life? Hourglass, how's it going for you? Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a it's been a journey for sure. Yeah. Um, when everything went down in March, I was really looking forward to um, this year being my year of travel. Ooh. Um, I thankfully I had a set I did a few years ago, almost to the day uh, for Boiler Room, yeah. and that changed my career. Yeah. Um, been viewed over two hundred thousand times, and so many nice. of those views Ooh. have been all over the world. Yes. Mm. And. It's changed my life. I'm mm -hmm. so thankful. Um, yeah, I got booked to DJ in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and from there, I, you know, had Xavier, you know, chose to come down there, spend his own money to come with me, yeah. and we scheduled some other, you know, dates together. And as soon as we landed, I think it was March 9th. Yeah. Um, he went to Paris for a gig. As soon as he hopped on the train, canceled. Um, oh. I was thankfully able to do the Switzerland gig, um, and I think. I needed that moment, honestly. Yeah. It was, I, I think even before COVID, I kind of got to a place where I was wearing myself a little bit thin mm. and um, kind of becoming an empty cup. Okay. And as much as I felt like I was, you know, doing what I loved and people were benefiting from it, putting all my energy into it, I definitely am, you know, thankful for a little moment of mm -hmm. rest that mm -hmm. we got. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. uh, I know that it's come at a great price, yeah. um, and I, I take that very seriously. So it was it was a lot. Even coming home, it took us like two weeks to get home wow. um, because of just the trying to change flights and travel restrictions and things like that. So when I got home, I was definitely a little stressed out. I was unsure. You know, I was just kind of getting into survival mode. You know, live events and mainly event production was my main income, mm -hmm, source mm -hmm, of income. So mm -hmm. I was like, huh, okay, so what are we going to do now, yeah. Jaleesa? That's, yeah. you know, that's what I would say to myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and from there, it's, it's, it's all worked out. I'm just so thankful. It's kind of given me an opportunity to do a lot of the things that have been on my to-do list mm -hmm. that I kind of would put to the side. Because um, I would just say, oh, I got to focus on this gig right now. I got to focus on this gig. Got to focus on this event with work crew and not saying, hey, what do you want to do for yourself? Like, what types of content do you want to build out? Um, so I've, I've been really busy um, still during, you know, during quarantine. Definitely had to take a moment before I went balls to the wall to mm. evaluate where I was and how I was feeling yeah. um, mentally. Um, and physically, you know, just to kind of rest and recover up yeah. and all of the members of work crew, we had to do that. And mm -hmm. then, you know, just with, it felt like we were just getting bad news after bad news after bad news. Right. With COVID death tolls rising yeah. um, with so many black brothers and sisters being murdered. Mm -hmm. I was just, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't really want to DJ or I didn't want to advertise myself or mm -hmm. say, hey, I'm streaming right now, like amidst all of these things, things that, that you're swiping yeah. right now. Yeah. And it took me a while to figure out what my place was going to be. That's why I really appreciate Dice for understanding that she's meant to inspire. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a while to realize that how much emotion I put into my, my mixes and that you know, it's a necessary force for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, it helps a lot of people doing what I do. And Juneteenth came around, and that was like the first day where I was legitimately like, this is a moment where my people, we can celebrate. Okay. We can have this moment to be happy. Mm -hmm. um, I planned to stream, uh, got three other uh, DJ friends that I really respect, got them to be a part of it. And once I did that, I felt good again. Mm -hmm. um, and it just it just felt good. Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of digital events. I've been doing you know the private Zoom parties for, uh, you know like happy hours for certain employers to just kind of a lot of cool um, social groups having Zoom meetups. I'm doing like a birthday party, but I've also been able to do streams on platforms like OK Player. I just did yeah. an Outcast Thank on you. Uh, tribute uh, set and that was really major for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of opportunities have come up 
Um, I DJed for Miss Tina Knowles charity organization. Nice. And my my stream was in Beyonce's house, so nice. I'm just gonna say at least Blue Ivy heard me or somebody in that house, <laughs> the maid or someone. Awesome. That <laughs> so is awesome. Yeah, it's been a blessing. Um, you know, being able to be in homes across the world. Yeah. You know, I've been streaming on Twitch doing. A uh, show that I curate called Think Outside the Clock. Yep. And that's just kind of given me an outlet to not just, not only just DJ, but to really spotlight artists that I believe in. So yesterday I did a pretty big one with a new duo called Bave. Yeah. They make what they call surf R&B. And I was able to do a 20 minute build out with music video screenings, interviewing. Nice. I interviewed them for about 10 minutes. And that's what I, I love to do. I want to get a little bit more into the hosting aspect of it all. You want so. my job? You want to do what I do? Is that no, what I, I can't take your job. I can't do what you do you how wanna, you do it. You want to interview? That's, you want to talk to me? But You'll that's be the beauty. I think, I think being able to be home and to like get out of the rat race yes. or the headspace that I was in before allowed me to realize that no one can do what you do. Just yeah. like you, everyone's an individual. And yeah. yeah, there's no reason to hold any of that back. Not, not at all. Congrats on the boiler room because that's Thank big. You. The boiler room changes lives. Yeah, for real. that was that's for like real. that was on my bucket list, yeah. and it came Man. out of nowhere in the dark side of my DMs. Man. You know, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Man, I actually partake, I participated, or was a, just a fan in the crowd when Stefan Ringer was able to do Ooh, it on yeah. Edgewood yep. um, on Sound Table 2, which is no more. Like, you know, yeah. this whole COVID is just wiping out stuff that used to be on Edgewood. That's another topic for another That's day. Another one. But that was like phenomenal because, you know, Boiler Room is just hot. And then I saw Ash yeah. Lauren do a, a Boiler Ash Room is amazing. Yeah. In, in Detroit for movement. Yeah. And, you know, it's just great. So, man, you know what? Congrats on that. Congrats Thank on you. that. Awesome stuff. Dice for you, for you, for you, for you. You tell hey. me what's going on with you because you are just phenomenal right so so tell me what what's going on and what is inspiring you and and i want to talk to you about the COVID 19 have you slowed down no, i mean not at all she's like that. no listen listen COVID put everybody's life in perspective okay and there there were two types of people that one person who said oh, i'm just gonna wait it out and the other person that was like we don't even know if we're going to have tomorrow. So we got to right. go. We got to so go. I, yeah, I, I was the one that was like, we got to go. We got to go. So, you know, I have Clue Worldwide, which is uh, Christian Ladies United every other Tuesday with Ty Scott King. That's something where we just try to inspire people mm -hmm. and women, women, but then guys jumped on the lives. And so we had to just kind of open that platform. But something that Hourglass was talking about was people needed musicians artists and djs in a different way this year mm -hmm. and if it if it was not for us the whole world would have jumped off the cliff and i'm gonna keep it real if djs were not online if artists were not doing shows from their living room if people didn't dig in deep and do the uh you know two three hours of just i'm gonna play music to try mm -hmm. to help people get through today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trust me like like no president will probably put respect on the artist's name or the uh, artist industry or entertainment industry. But if it was not for us, and this is not me being arrogant, this is me actually saying everything from a DJ uh, network, a DJ Radical in Atlanta, these guys are in Atlanta, a DJ Jesus Beats, like uh, DJ Ronnie Rons, to who, you name it, from hip, DJ Tony Tone. Like if DJs were not on DJ Cast in London, mm -hmm. shout out to all the sisters, you know, so it's like, if, the, if, if we were not in a position to say, we got the equipment, we got the audience, we got the music, let's go. Mm -hmm. Like if, if, if we didn't just say, we don't need to be paid right now. We know that artists are hurting. Like I got phone calls from people wanting to commit suicide because they couldn't tour because their whole life was based around, I'm on tour four days a week. That's how I feed my family with 20 grand a night. Mm. So, when co so when COVID comes and I have nothing, my whole world is destroyed. Like, right. and, and it, and it, it really, I'll be, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I spent a many a night on the phone with a person or artist and just talking them off a ledge and saying, life is not over. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, this is just the season. The season sucks, but you're going to need to hang in there. Right. And you, 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 you need to go do a live right now and tell people how you feel 
So they'll keep pushing, you know, they'll yeah. keep pushing. Yeah. And so this whole thing, like artists bring energy mm -hmm. and obviously I'm a super Christian. I love the Lord, but I know everything is energy. So it's like you, you got to bring, you bring it like, and, and trust me, it's not created. It's not destroyed. What you throw out, you get back. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's important for artists, DJs, um, singers, all that. If God gave you a gift, this is your season to say, I really got to push that yeah. because I have somebody on the other side of the screen or the other side of the phone or the other side of the internet that thinks they need to end it today. Mm. You know, so it's like, it's up to me. Like, and, it, and they don't have to be a licensed minister, but to your point, you said it earlier today, Michelle, you guys are kind of like ministers because you are giving people that hope. You're giving people that love, that other memory that they mm -hmm. have from, you know, four years ago when mm -hmm. life was good. And it's like, it's important that you don't forget that, mm -hmm. you know, like, and everybody doesn't have an ear. Everybody don't have it. People can't just be DJs, you right. know, like people can't just be yeah. artists. Yeah. So it's like, if you know, you feel, like, and it, this is so funny because I was at work one day and I, and I shared with them, I said, I judge all my friends by how many songs they know. Is that wrong? <laughs> not wrong. Not wrong at all. Do you not do that? Like when you, when, like, that's how you know. When you, when you're like, Hey, have you heard that? Like when you start to quiz people, I don't like, really like music. Who? who says and, you'll that? Be like, and you'll be like, oh, no. And it's just, and it, it is just like a line in the sand. Like, nah, no, but you, no, Dice, you're nah. absolutely, you're absolutely right, Dice. A lot of people <laughs> don't come out of their box, right? So they like certain things. They yeah. only listen to certain stations. They don't sure. listen. That's for them. That's not for me. I don't listen to that stuff. And I, don't, right. you know, people box themselves in. So mm -hmm. they sometimes you're going to have a conversation and they're not going to be able to relate. And music <laughs> transcends genders, race, cultures, color, color sex, sexual, sexual preference, everything. Uh, so uh, financial, financial sex, demographics, everything, yeah. everything, everything. So you need to check in, tune in, <laughs> check out a stream. Yeah, you know, I'm you a do. mom. I have a teenage son. So I need to know what he likes, what he doesn't like, what he's listening to, lyrical mm -hmm. content, what it is. Mm -hmm. You can't make comparisons if you don't know right you can't now. be stuck in the same bubble so you know when you guys are able to stretch and pull and do all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff you know you mm -hmm. got to be able to keep up and music is a conversation piece it will always be a conversation piece right we'll mm -hmm. always talk about mm -hmm. from Meg yeah. the Stallion to Nicki Minaj mm -hmm. to Waka Flocka to 2 Change <clears throat> to Outkast mm -hmm. you know Andre 3000 you know mm -hmm. I mean it's 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 crazy so you gotta mm -hmm. have span and you got to have range. I want to mm -hmm. ask you, uh, Dice, have you ever had an opportunity to play at a festival? Like a large uh, crowd of people, like huge well, outdoor festival? I, I, well, tr I performed at a, a million festivals world worldwide. Like mm -hmm. I said, from um, everywhere in Atlanta to your Creation Fest, to your um, shoot, your Sunshine Music Festivals, like to your, he to your big festivals. Mm -hmm. but, but what people have not seen me do is what I get to do now, right? Yes. Every week, every week concerning music. So they only have seen me as an artist. That's why I was like, it's kind of cool that you have like a show like Real, Real Chicks Rock mm -hmm. and things like that. And like I said, Beat Break Radio, where people are like, yeah, this person is an artist and that, or you've only known them as a writer, but turns out they actually do other things. They do other know? things. So, mm -hmm. um, but it, and it, and, and DJs, they don't get the respect they deserve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so for me, just playing that background role, like having the arsenal, playing music here and there, you know, and even the cool part is I, I know a lot of artists, so I've been able to borrow their music uh -huh. where other, other people haven't been able to do that, but, yeah. you know, because they get sued. But I'm like, listen, <laughs> I want to rock, rock over that track. It's hot. Just let me have it. And they just let it go. And it's not a thing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But um, so I'm in, a, I'm in a unique position that I... I wouldn't have thought I'd be here five years ago where mm. it was like, all right, you've been able to travel the world. You meet all these people, you know, all these people. And now you get to be in their camp because they know you. Mm -hmm. So they, so there's a different type of trust, you know, like it's, it's one thing when you don't know the DJ, but it's another thing when you know the DJ, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a whole nother beast. Like when, yeah. you, when there's a relationship concerning artistry, 
listen, that just, that's a whole nother uh, atmosphere. That's a whole nother arena. So that's where I am right now. And I'm embracing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I didn't think I'd be able to do it. I didn't think I had what it took, you know, kind of to hourglasses point, you have people who always want something from you. Mm -hmm. They want to use your name. Right. They want to use your picture. Right. Uh, they want to use your this. And it's like, what about what I bring to the party though? Mm -hmm. Like, like what, like, what about that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, are, you know, like, can I just be me or mm -hmm. is it about you making your event bigger because of who I am? Because you know what I'm saying? Are. So, um, that's a whole nother side of the DJ and definitely music arena where people are like, they will try to influence you in a different way. And some DJs, like you said, they'll only play your music if you pay them. They'll only play your music if you're on Billboard. They'll only play your music if people know your name. I'm not that person. Mm -hmm. Like, I am not that person. Like, I want to know if it's good. Is it quality? Is it banging? Will other people enjoy it? Is that message on point? And so it's like, you don't have a lot of people out there who, and I don't care what age you are. Some people limit you from that too. It's yeah. like, yeah, if yeah. it's good, if it's good, it's good. You could be yeah. 85 years old and just drop the nicest song on SoundCloud. And it's like, all right, we're going to play this on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we got played on, we got mm -hmm. played on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, they're, you know, and shout out to all the DJs across the world because it is a um, thankless genre mm -hmm. where even the artists that will pay you in a club won't come and say thank you after you play their song. So it's like, you know what I mean? Man. So it's like, come, come on now. Man. Come on now. I'm exposing you to 5,000 people at, at, in, in, thir in three minutes. Yeah. What, who else can do that for you right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. So has, Nobody. It, has the compensation been where it needs to be for you as a DJ and as an artist? Have you... Do you feel you get compensated? I mean, financially, when you do a deal, hey, I need you to come What's play it? this gig. It, you oh. see my eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not no. messing with <laughs> dice. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> it was funny. Like, when I was growing up and, and people would say something crazy to you and they would ask you the question and you'd be like, <laughs> it's almost like a zombie effect like okay yeah. okay come on man i mean <laughs> i think the women the woman part is like a whole nother thing yeah it's just yeah. kind of like it's like in society like people will give a a dj cal i posted a picture of dj Khaled because people were talking so much trash and i was like do you know I met him in like Louisville and like night and like in like 1990 when nobody was even Nobody cared, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. nobody cared. And I posted a photo and it was like, oh man, you've been around a lot of people. I'm like, mm -hmm. yes. But I think the guys have always got more respect than the girls. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there are some nice, oh Lord, there are some nice women out here. Actually, I, I hate to say this, probably some girls that are better than some guys, but these are all facts. Like the girls are just as good as the guys. No, they don't get paid as much. I mean, I have probably gotten paid two times in my whole life on a, on a scale equal to a male. Wow. Concerning all, this is real talk, yeah. you know? And yeah. it's just kind of like, okay, all right, you know? Because there's an expectation for women to do more for less. Yes, and I, yeah, that's very true. I don't know why that is though. I was like, like, I don't know who started that. I don't know. Yeah, and, um, they can miss me it, with that. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 yeah, yeah, it's horrible. It's like, yeah, and if you give any kickback, you the problem. Yeah, don't let you. Yeah, don't let you. Be, yeah. Oh, you yeah. yeah, it's like it's a whole thing. Being, I think it. I yeah, think it's, it is. It's a thing. I, I think it's it is thing. dice that they. Some people, not all, not, not all, all, not. Let me put. Let me say it again. I'm gonna lean in the mic. Not all yeah. men, not all people, not but all. some people feel like they're doing you a favor, right? But even giving you the opportunity to be mm -hmm. on the same stage with them and other people. So take this, what I'm giving you and be okay with that. That, yeah. that I, I believe that's where some of the mindset comes from. Like I'm doing you a solid by putting you Come on, on now. because people, they feel like people don't know you enough. Cause if you had a bigger name, you probably mm -hmm. wouldn't be rocking with them in their space. Come You'd be doing now. your own thing. You'd be headlining your own thing. So I think people feel it's a little arrogance, a little bit of a control thing. 
Could be. And it's not all it's not all people. They know who they are. They're gonna remain yeah, nameless. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's it's enough to sting you. But it yeah. makes it puts you in a space though, Dice, and I know Hourglass you'll agree, that you even go harder. And then the people yeah, come do. for you oh, yeah. even more. Listen, and you get more stuff word, after that, right? Hourglass, tell them. The word no. no. The word no is a real word, y'all. Use oh. it. Like I oh, say that yeah. so much. I've had I had a few little rants on Twitter. You know, I've been approached similarly, mm -hmm. especially, you know, yeah. in COVID, you know, Atlanta's wide open, right? you yeah. know, and, and the crazy thing is the offers that I've been offered myself and been told yeah. are, are crazy, you know, and I understand <laughs> that right now, you know, we're all in sticky economic situations, right. restaurants, clubs, especially, mm -hmm. but if you have a restaurant and you can't afford to pay the DJ, Maybe you can find an alternative. Come on now. Play some yeah. music. You don't need a DJ <laughs> for brunch for Listen. five hours for a hundred dollars or something crazy like that, you know? Listen, um, you pay you pay the DJ. Honestly, yes. the DJ should get paid first. Yeah. And it's so funny. I'm glad you said that. So we got married, um, my husband and I, we got married in, in Atlanta. It was like uh, an apartment complex. They used to be an old African American college, but the like our friends put the event on for us. And Sterling Anthony, and this is a DJ from back in the day, he was a DJ, he was our DJ. And he was like, no, sis, it's okay. You know, because everybody was like, we just going to gift you, gift you, gift you. Now, mind you, me and my husband were broke getting married. Mm -hmm. We, like, I paid for my dress, he paid for his suit. You know, my friend made the cupcakes. My mom was in the kitchen. Like, yeah. we, like it, this was the real deal. Mm -hmm. And so our heart was like, DJ though and so we were driving literally away from our wedding opening up the envelopes because you know people donate money to your you know they give you money when you first get married the first two hundred dollars we was in Stone Mountain you know and I was like we need to pay Sterling like we, we literally we got on the phone was like bruh like like, like we want to pay like out of everybody else because it was like if there was no you there would be no party mm-hmm yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. That is it. Period. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking about when they were setting up, when they were cooking, when they were when we was getting married, when I'm walking down the aisle with my microphone, when they shutting down. Like you, the DJ comes first, takes the longest, you know, all day long setting up, yeah. dealing with every all, everybody's drama. Yeah. They the last one to leave. leave. Yeah. Pay the DJ. Yeah. Pay the DJ. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, he was the one, it was like our brain was like, yes, we could pay every dancer, every person that rapped, people that just don't, but it was like the DJ. Like, our heart was like, we got to go find the DJ. Yeah. And we felt, we felt so good going to just say, bruh, here's your, like, here's your money. We know mm -hmm. how much work that takes. And so, um, DJs, don't, they don't get enough love. Yeah. They just don't. They just don't. You have coalitions that even charge DJs to just stay in the game. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, your DJ is the, they are like the worker bee of the world. You mm -hmm. know, like, and they do it because they love music. That's mm -hmm. what people don't appreciate. Yeah, yeah. It's like, they're not doing it because they want your attention. Like, it's something in their soul that's yeah. like, oh, you know, like, yeah. I got to play this. You know, like, yeah. I got to hear this. Yeah. I got, like, all day long, it's it's in their mind. Like it's nothing you got. You don't have to go make a DJ be a DJ. Like mm -hmm. a DJ is just a DJ. Yeah. So it's yeah. I mean, you can go back to the Bible days. Like they've been they've been playing. They've been this DJs everywhere. <laughs> she <laughs> said in the Bible days. Our glasses you hear? She said back she in the Bible days. No, 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 no. I mean, they, they, had, they had all jokes aside in the story. So you had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And Abednego. And you obviously you had the brothers who were not going to bow to this gold god. But if you go and read the text, it was like, when the music started, that was the DJ. Mm -hmm. The DJ, yeah. was, like, the DJ yeah. was like, when this starts, y'all need to go ahead and drop down. Yeah. And they, they did it three times. And I'm just trying to tell you, can't nobody start music three times in a row but a DJ. Okay. So I was like, yo, the DJ was like, they're they not going to do it. We got to put them in the, uh, we got to burn them, you know? But that's when they made it out, made it out of the lion's den. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I'm saying musicians and the people in control and the DJs have been around for centuries. Yeah. So it's like, but they always have a thankless job. I mean, every show you watch has music playing. Every new show you watch, every uh, the view you. I mean, it's a DJ there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, 
Come on, man. So, but, but, but you rarely hear about the DJ. So shout out to, uh, yeah, Hourglass and everybody else in the ATL. Every DJ, every DJ Dice. I met Likewise. DJ Dice. Yeah. I, met, I, met, mm -hmm. I met the other DJ Dice from DOS FX in London mm. when I was 17 years old. And I was so impressed that his name was DJ Dice. You know, I was like, oh, you Dice? I'm Dice. Oh, you <laughs> DJ Dice? Like, it was a thing, you know? Yeah. But when I say, man, a DJ is who rocks the party. So, mm. um, and the party, the party got to keep going. Got to so. keep going. Yeah. Got to keep going. Hourglass, talk to me about doing festivals. Uh, you know, we talked about it early, earlier today, but I want to hear your, how did you feel to do one music fest and other festivals that you've done? Ooh. I, I mean, know. it's exciting. I feel like it's just a, it's honestly like when you get opportunities like those mm -hmm. and you train yourself by doing the parties on a regular, honestly, it kind of feels like you just showing off doing your greatest hits, like, this is going to kill it. You know, it's the energy <laughs> thing. It's all about energy and festivals. Yeah. So I love being able to balance that out because mm -hmm. I like having my chill vibe out moments. I like making my mixes. I like doing my parties. When we get in the festival zone, you really are controlling the energy on mm -hmm. another level. Um, so, yeah, I love One Music Fest. They put me in the a magic spot. They I did. appreciate uh, Rasta Root for that. He put yes. me right in between uh, Ari Lennox and yes. Deanna Taylor. Yes. So that was like, hot. I was like, bet. It was Let's hot. Go. I just did a show with Ari Lennox. Let's go. It was hot. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it was a lot of fun. I mean, the, it's crazy. I get more nerves setting up my camera and my tech for digital streams than I do for really? a festival. Because, you know. Tech, anything can happen, you know, as far as like issues and stuff like that. It's plug and play, you know. And and something about just knowing that pressure in the moment, just getting on that stage and knowing that this is happening, like something inside my, me just like turns on mm. and clicks to where it's like, <clears throat> you got to do this and you yeah. got to do, you know, yeah. real. Like when I did the boiler room set, I was so nervous before but as soon as it started, it was like I was out of my body. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, I was going to say, um, like, like Hourglass was just saying, you don't, if you're, if you're really alive and you're living, you understand nothing's happening outside of the present. Not the past, not tomorrow. You can't control tomorrow. You can't control the past. But whatever I do right now, I'm going to create something that's never been done before mm -hmm. can't be, can't be duplicated mm -hmm. the only thing you can do is maybe record it but you're not you're still not going to get the feeling like you were in the building right. this thing this thing went down so it's like it's all it's, it's definitely magic and it's definitely like something that's very sacred when it comes to the person who is putting out that vibe like who mm -hmm. whoever is intentionally releasing that vibe and it's coming through the speakers and it's moving you you're not going to be able to get that moment back. And if you're in that space, it's a blessing. So it's like, that's, that's why I'm like, man, to me, DJs are just, they're just amazing. Mm -hmm. Like the things that they do, like, and there's no way it's, it, there's no format. You can't put that in an Excel spreadsheet right. and just be like, <laughs> I'm a, cause, and, and here's the deal. I, I'm sure I would like to speak to that. You could think you were going to play that song and it's something you just like, nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> That I'd playlist like, is, yeah, that playlist like, I make yeah, beforehand, that's just yeah, for nerves. Just for <laughs> but you never, you don't touch it? You're not going, yeah. You're like, no, <laughs> no. Because and, if you're being a real a one. Being a, yeah, like being a DJ is a whole vibe. Yeah, it, it is. is. It's, not a, it's not a half a vibe. No, it's, it's not. Whole, <laughs> and, and you and you got to be fully invested and say, when, like, whenever whenever I'm going, that's it. Like, like, and I don't really care who comes, drops me, whatever, asks me to play where like you, you have to be in control of what the feel is. And I think that's what makes a good DJ, a, a good DJ yeah. is like, they're in, they're just in that way. They like, know they yeah. feel the room and, and they know how yeah, to go. They, you yeah, ladies yeah. have a preference, like, um, all female lineup. You like playing with other female DJs? Have you had the opportunity to do it? Of course. Yeah, you like Every that? Course. It's cute. Girl, it's nice. Girl power. Girl. It's Girls all that. Yeah. <laughs> Girls on everything. Girls yeah. over everything. You know, the, the, yeah, the bros used to have the bros over hoes. I'm like, girls over everything. Like, I, I hear y'all, but I'm okay. This is it's so funny because I do have one son that I've been able to, like, birth into this world. Mm -hmm. My husband has three, so we have four collective, but my one, my biological, I always told him, everything you do, boo, is for girls. There's <laughs> yeah. nothing. Yeah. 
It's nothing on this earth that you don't do for a girl. Yeah. I'm talking about you going to the gym, you getting your education, you working a job, the car you go buy, mm -hmm. the clothes you go buy. Like, there is nothing. So I just want to be honest with you, bruh. It's all about us. <laughs> bruh, it's all about us. Like, I don't, and it doesn't even matter. It's like, even if you, it, you can be a girl that likes girls, it's still about me. So it's like, you can, and you can, be a, you can be a guy that acts like a girl. It's still about me. So we can just, like, we can do this all day. But, and, it, and I didn't pick to be a girl. It's just something that, you know, my parents did what they did, and now I'm a girl. But what I learned is there's a certain power that women possess. Like, there's a certain love. There's a certain compassion. And there's a certain thing that we have. DJs, guys are awesome, but there's some. Listen, what happens at the end of the night when you're trying to get everybody together? You play the love song. Mm-hmm. Like, like, yeah. I, like you, you slow go it down. Your, uh, yeah, yeah. You gonna go through your hip hop, your house, your reggae, and then you gonna come right back to the love. Mm -hmm. and, and and it is us who go hit that dance. We will hit that dance floor religiously. Mm -hmm. We'll do the electric slide, the tootsie roll. We'll do the uh, cha cha slide. Like the girls just do. We just have this thing that we, we do what we do. Yeah. And there's a yeah. connection. There's a there's a DJ connection with the girls. So that's why I'm like. I love any woman who is in this game of music, entertainment, mm -hmm. because it, it takes a certain heart to recognize that. Mm -hmm. And it takes a certain appreciation to uplift the other DJs and artists and, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that are doing it. Like, mm -hmm. And the girls always get a hard time. Like, we, we started out like that. Like, why we get so... Why we get the hard time when we are the ones that run the party? <laughs> so it's like, let us let us have a party. And then if yeah. you got a girl, if you got a girl DJ, we don't got to talk about it a lot because she's just going, she's going to be in her zone, and mm -hmm. she already know what's going to happen from, from four o'clock to ten. Okay. Like mm -hmm. she, and, and she's going to get you where you need to go. Okay. Yeah, I All love that. when it's when it's natural yeah. too. You know, when it's like it's not like a male concocted. Oh yeah, we gonna do. Right. Ladies night. I've seen a, I've seen I've seen a flyer. I've seen a flyer of a, a male DJ who was like looking down on like he had to put himself in the flyer. Come looking on now. down at four other women just right. to kind of be like, I it's made this happen. Like, happen. Right. No, 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 but I love Come on yeah, now. yeah, I love when it's natural. I love like when I, I put, you know, when we have work group parties, like women are that we're they're on top of mind always. And oh, no. I love when I'm putting together a lineup for an event. And yeah. it's not even like, oh, I w I'm purposefully choosing women. It's like they come to mind first because they, I know they provide and deliver this vibe that we need for this party. And they mm -hmm. consistently put the care into it. Uh, I don't wait a minute, realize. wait a minute. Even, even the DJs know. Hey, you got you to got fire your friend, Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you already know. Whatever you play, yeah. the, girl, the, the girls are gonna support, and the girl we're gonna tip out on the floor in the six inch heels, yeah. and we're gonna make we're gonna we're gonna make this a thing. Yeah, like so. That's why I was like, I, you know, my heart is that hopefully men, as we move forward, and I think from everything we've been able to see this year, I think that the guys have been more supportive of women and saying. Man, like y'all are here for yes, we here for you. Bro. Yeah, we've been here. We've been here forever. We've been, but, we've right, been right, here. Right, we've been, we've been here. here. Hello, yeah, we've been they, here. But, yeah, but they they've been putting some respect and mm -hmm. and honestly, with all the flyers and stuff, yes, they got them crack, them crack uh, club flyers, but they have been more supportive of let the girl DJ like she's she's gonna handle it. You know, like mm -hmm. like, like let her have, mm -hmm. like let her have it. Even for me, like there nobody has. Um, I, I didn't give anybody a reason to trust me at this, but I, I was like, I'm gonna show up every week and and give my and give my best. Right. And literally, and and I'm, I'm sitting here like that's that's what's got me in the position position I am now. I was like, I'm gonna show up, give it my all, and uh, we'll see what happens. But and that's building that's building trust with the guys. So, um, you know, shout out got, to the guys got, we, that we, support we, you. Yeah. Shouts yeah. out to the guys that support women Absolutely. DJs. Shout out. And, shout and out. You know, I definitely want to yeah. shout out to, you know, I'm, I'm a queer DJ and just that the queer scene here as well, just uh -huh. even amongst the all women lineup, there are so many amazing women, mm -hmm. queer DJs, trans mm -hmm. DJs out here. Mm -hmm. I'm be, and, I, Hourglass, you missed, I'm, you missed a moment, an era in Atlanta culture. And Michelle, you, I don't know if you know, because you might not have been in that scene. 
But if you if you have been around for the first Marquette mm-hmm. by the A by that by the AUC, and I'm not talking about the second Marquette. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about there was a scene at the AUC. I'm t- I would go buy liquor at the AUC. Like there it was like a it was a thing, like a movie, like a Spike Lee joint. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about my respect for women DJs, women artists, um, trans women, you name it. Like I coming from Indiana, it was like Eh, nobody does this. And then you get dropped in the middle of nowhere <laughs> at night and you're like, who is doing this? And it's like, why, why am I not, not a part of this? Like, right. and why doesn't anybody know about mm-hmm. this? But that's why I was saying earlier about Atlanta, like my heart and my connections. And if you ever follow me on a Facebook, a Twitter, or Instagram, you're like, why she got all these friends? I'm like, you have no idea who I know. Yeah. But I, but I, but I know these people from a pure place right. where we ha- we had the same thing in common artistry love connection and nobody no what i mean from cali to new york to florida atlanta has been the place where i have been able to be me 100 percent, and everybody else has been able to be them 100 mm-hmm. percent. and it's and it's it's grown and it hasn't like turned into something that was like a horror movie it was just like yeah. i mean I'm, I'm keeping it real so um, DJs, much love and much respect. And like I said, I mentioned the Marquette because I was like, that was the first place where I saw a show of a woman DJ who was DJing for women who were doing just stuff that girls had never even seen before mm-hmm. in life. Mm-hmm. So, Marquette, um, I'm, I'm looking it up. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Michelle, Michelle, she ain't ready. But, uh, she ain't ready. But, uh, that's why I was like, ATL has a spot in my heart, man. Yeah. Nobody nobody could ever replace mm-hmm. because I'm like the things that I've been able to see the people I've been able to meet and the lessons I'm talking about, like not just um, lessons of what not to do, but lessons of integrity mm-hmm. and lessons of perseverance. I'm Ooh, like, yeah. I, I have never learned that anywhere else, but in Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta has allowed people to dream and execute your dreams, right? You, yeah. Like yeah. you're doing things that you thought, it was on a bucket list, as Hourglass said, but man, it, it's happened through relationships, yeah. connections, word of mouth, and support. Mm. You know, because mm. you're good at what you do, people mm. want to see you flourish and thrive. And it's like, man, one minute you're here, next minute you're playing across the country. Who would have thought yeah. that? You you didn't yeah. think that in St. Louis. You thought yeah. maybe, you know, ha- perhaps, right? But mm. Atlanta is a place where connecting the dots pays off Man. for you. It pays it off does. for you. It, do, it does. It does. I want to ask does. you, it Hourglass, does. with social media, because the work crew is big on social media. Big, <laughs> big, big on social media, right? So um, that's good to hear. Is it, is, it, is it helpful or is it sometimes annoying? And let me tell you where I'm going with it, because mm-hmm. it's great that, you know, because sometimes certain some things don't need to be recorded. You know what I'm oh, saying? 100%. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Dice is on the head. Like, if we get in our life, come on, yo. We don't need the camera with the iPhone light or the LG light. And, <laughs> but then sometimes the vibe is so dope, you know, I'm, I'm flipping the coin, that yeah. people want to capture it and share yeah. it for those that missed out. And so yeah. what happens is when people see that you getting it in and you doing this, man, I, the next time work crew's doing something, Hourglass mm-hmm. is playing somewhere, I got to catch her, man, because, yo, mm-hmm. she did da 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 So do you feel that it's helpful or, or, or annoying or both? How do you feel, Hourglass? Yeah, I definitely fluctuate. Um, yeah. yeah. I know it's definitely helpful. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I have to take my breaks for sure. Cause, yeah. Because, you know, I work crew is you know we're not just the djs we're the promoters yeah the marketers Mm. and Mm. yeah that person that instagram post that was me (laughs) you know like all right let me put this out because we have to kind of thing but but no it's very helpful because atlanta the the magic that's here the one thing i think that's lacking is um press or you know Ah. just awareness of it all Mm -hmm. if you're here in atlanta you know Mm -hmm. but a lot of people outside don't even know that there's yeah. more to Atlanta. Yeah. Like we, I went to Toronto um, last year, 
and we met up with a few uh, dance hall artists and mm -hmm. we were showing them pictures from our party wine which is all global oh, we bring yes! the latin community yes! the african community mm -hmm. the caribbean mm -hmm. community together and yeah. then just people like me who we we not sure you know yeah. slavery was a thing mm -hmm. you know, a terrible thing <laughs> And, uh, mess. you know, we all come together and, and we were showing them pictures. We were showing them the artists we brought and they were like, we didn't even know that this existed in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We thought it was just the strip club and, and, on, man. and you know, R&B and the trap, you yeah, know, so no, that's just... one thing that we've had to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, she, listen, she's so right. Um, being from Indiana, it was like uh, Garth Brooks, Alan Jackson, ACDC, like all these groups who obviously they're they're either country or they're hardcore rock groups. Mm -hmm. But my first you talk you were talking about um uh, house music earlier, mm -hmm. hourglass, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Bjork, Bjork and Porter said the first yeah. time I heard the first time I heard of these was in Atlanta. I was like, <laughs> and, and, and people, it's like the whitest of the white, yeah, of the Caucasianess, of the rock, of the outside yeah. of my New York blackness. Is good, though. It was in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, yeah. I, just, I just remember when I got there, I was like, nobody knows that this happens in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Like, no, like nobody knows that you have DJs who appreciate good music mm -hmm. from all over the world, and they're not biased, and they'll play it in a club. You know, like, it's so fun. Like, when I got there, it was like the Gold Club, Club 112. Like, yes. all this, it, the industry was Keith Sweat's club. It's like, it, it was a yeah. it was a time where, um, I hate to date myself, but I have been places that people will never go. Yeah. Like, Atlanta got me on BET in 1996. Mm. Because, all because I came from Europe, got kicked off the plane because we ate some weed brownies. But that's a long story. <laughs> The bottom line was when I when we got back to DC, I took my I took all my tapes and my footage from Atlanta. I was like, yo, bro, we just went to it. We went to Europe, you know, trying to do some music. We got kicked out. But I'm from I'm from ATL. Like, this is what we've done. These are the videos. Eric Sermon's uh rim shop. You don't know nothing about that. Yeah. Cause I know you wasn't there, hourglass, but my <laughs> point is, my point my my point is. There, this is a place where you had the Wu store downtown on Peachtree. And mm -hmm. I'm, if there's just yeah. some things you cannot. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I'm like, when people hate on anything from Atlanta, I get so irritated. Cause yeah. I'm like, you have, you, you don't have no clue about Young Jock store. You don't have no clue about this stuff because I got to live it, see it and watch it come up. Right. You know, like, man. So, so I have a love and respect for it. But, but with all that being said though, like, people don't understand that it's not black. Like, people, every time you say Atlanta, it's like, oh, it's so black. I'm like, it is black. But 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 the blacks are not ignorant, though. Mm. The, blacks, the blacks are very open to eating healthy, yeah. uh, uh, mm -hmm. being in their community, mm -hmm. um, supporting their community, mm -hmm. being there for their community, like learning about other communities. That's the one thing I can say. Right. Atlanta... You know, people are like, oh, it's so South and Southern, and people, uh, you know, the accent. I'm like, listen, they can talk with a draw, shout at you this all day long, Scrawberry Street, all that all day. <laughs> but but they're not stupid, though. Yeah. Like, so that's been my that's been my message as I've been able to travel. Like, even getting here in Chicago, are oh, you from the A? It's like, please don't expect me to just be all about the, like, like the, the culture. I'm more about who you are, where I'm from, what do we have in common? And what can what can we do now? Mm -hmm. Like that's that's the part of Atlanta, you know. And shout out to everybody who uh, turned that state blue. I don't know how y'all did that, <laughs> or, but uh, I don't know how y'all did that. I was up here, I was up here watching like, right? That was a, <laughs> oh my goodness, that I was said, a moment. I, said, I don't know how y'all did that, but when, but when I say Keisha Bottoms and everybody else, I don't know what black magic you got, but work it. Uh, I, Stay I was so proud. I was I was proud. Yeah. yeah, like it was it was just a proud moment of. God, these are my people. Even my husband said it to me before. He said, man, honey, all those people that came to our wedding, I had no idea that they were like key players in their game, in their lane. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, I just hate that I, I didn't really show them the love that I could have because mm -hmm. he's something, oh, they just your friends, but he had no clue that they were running Atlanta, you know? So I was like, you know, they was running Atlanta. They was just young, you know, <laughs> they was just young. But um, anywho, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm done with all that Cotton Club, Jaguar and all that. 
it's just ATL. There's no better place. Like I, I've been, I've been a lot of places, but there's no better place that I've been to where people love you for who you are, what you do. And there, and it's multicultural and diverse. Like Mm -hmm. I I ain't been nowhere, like nowhere. Yeah. 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 Nowhere. So are you ladies interested to DJing other young ladies coming up in the game? You guys have so much experience and so talented. Mm -hmm. Have you guys started that model, that process? Is Mm -hmm. it something we can expect to see maybe in a couple of years? Um, What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Our glass, I'll let you go first. Yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, event production is my my number one. So um, I've really been, you know, trying to identify people that would come to our parties, but like love to see the components of it all, want to get there early, want to kick it. And we've been able to really build our our team that way. So I've been, you know, definitely stepping into a mentorship role. I'm just trying to um, show show women, you know, all the aspects, you know, that there's more, there's more than DJing. There's actually, you know, like work crew is kind of morphing into an agency, creative agency, Mm -hmm. where we're using the knowledge and our networks into um, building brand activations Mm -hmm. and um, just creating like experiences that only people that have this experience that we have can create. Um, So I've really just been, you know, looking for women that are just interested in breaking into music yeah. any type of way. Yeah. Um, definitely have um, looked out for a lot of DJs. I've had a little less, you know, less hands-on approach, just scheduled time-wise, but I've definitely had moments I've had, had DJs with my friend Jody. She'll come in and she'll come in and use my turntables and practice, and yeah. I'll just kind of do work while she's doing that, give her, you know, nice. weeks, things like that. Yeah. Um, and then just go to other gigs and support support other DJs and then if they ask for advice or let them shadow me but I definitely Mm -hmm. just that support is everything my Mm -hmm. main thing has been just kind of being open to just being available so even just in the digital space transitioning and getting equipment and learning how to stream and I've I've been talking to people every day just Mm -hmm. trying to help them get set up because I don't the one thing I've already seen a lack of on the online platforms Twitch Instagram is a lack of black women in this space. Come on now. Mm-hmm. So I've just kind of been like, oh, what you need? I got yeah. you. You yeah. need to come. If you want to be a guest on the show, you don't have the stuff, come mm-hmm. over here, come nice. to one of our cribs, that kind of thing. So just, come on now. yeah, really just trying to, even DJs that might already be established or have started, just kind of, just kind of show them the other possibilities to what they're doing now. Mm-hmm. 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 Technology is a big thing. It's not going away. Yeah, and, good. you know, ironically, people just think they can just appear and just DJ. Mm-hmm. And there's an art to it. There's sound. There's visualization. Yeah. There's just, you know, your aunt, the woofer, the, the speaker, the, the, the mm-hmm. board, the mixer, mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Serato versus Pioneer, your computer. Mm-hmm. It's a whole. And some people look at it and go, oh, my God. Like, I don't even know where <laughs> to begin. So there's edu- yeah. there's an opportunity mm-hmm. to educate people. And especially, mm-hmm. you know, you want them. To be um, quality in their in their spe- in their in their space, so it's mm-hmm. it's great to kind of give them a grassroots up type of thing versus just jumping in and microwaving. It's good to understand yeah. how these things work and flow together and how you sound. Sound is important too. People sometimes oh, sound man. like trash so and they're like, yo, I'm playing anyway, but like, you sound like trash. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Cause your sound right. is whack. Your speakers is buzzing. Like, yo, if you sound like garbage, I don't care if you put Minnie Rippington through it, L- Luther no. or whatever, it's gonna sound like garbage. <laughs> so sound is very important yeah. and critical, you know, to this whole thing. And it goes back to what Dice is saying is that people just don't respect the DJ. You got guys are doing lighting too mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys do everything. lighting sound yeah. all of everything it. setting up chairs the room mm-hmm. everything and breaking it and all down microphone listen, <laughs> come on no, dice michelle, no michelle you, you're, you're you're right i think i thank god for people like hourglass who are willing to spend the time yeah. because some people are not willing to show you yeah um this is what you need this is the mic you need this is the you know like you need to get a good set of headphones. Right. You need to get a good, like go ahead and, and invest. Don't yeah. don't just yeah. don't just go live where people. Um, it's 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 called creating unmissable content. You know, like every every time I'm posting, every time I'm going live, 
It should be something that somebody didn't want to miss. Mm -hmm. And that's what sets you apart as a DJ from a lot of other people. And you have to constantly, you got to be in the know, like what's next, what's hot, what's new. And it's not that you necessarily got to go buy what's new, but you need to know like, all right, this is a trend. You know, like we, the DJ is like the connection uh, of the people. So it's like, it's important for you to be on social media. Maybe you don't spend like your whole day being social, but you need to know what people are listening, looking for, into, why are they leaning that way? Do you have that? Do you have that in your repertoire that you can, you know, go ahead and pump out? But um, something that Hourglass said a minute ago, and I can't remember what she said, but everything is a wave. Like that's that's what we've learned in life. Yeah. Yeah. Like it don't it don't matter if you a uh, Christian, atheist, Gothic, Catholic, agnostic. You you have learned that everything from the sun to a star, it's a wave. That's what we do. Mm. Like that's 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 what we shoot back. Like that's what we emit. You know. So it's like once you once you understand you are controlling people's biology, mm. like it, 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 it's a, it's, it's deeper than just I'm playing music. You like it. It's like, I'm literally manipulating your DNA right now and, and how you are receiving what life is right now. So there is a certain, uh, respect and there's a certain honor that, that you need to be like, all right, I need to, I don't need to just be doing this cause I think it's cute. I need to be, I need to be doing this because I know I'm influencing others. I know, I know I'm influencing others and how am I influencing others? You know what I'm saying? Like there's a responsibility there that if you're a good DJ, you, you are aware, you're, mm. you're cognizant about it. You're like, all right, if it's party time, it's party time. If it's turn up time, it's turn up time. Mm -hmm. If it's funeral yeah. time, it's funeral time. You know what I'm saying? If, <laughs> yeah. it's, if, it's, if, it's, if it's I'm getting married time, it's I'm getting married time. But there's a certain responsibility that I think that's what makes a good DJ a good DJ. Is that when they go to a, a, a quinceanera, you know, they know, they know she's turning 16. Teen. They're not going to cross the line. They're going to be like, I'm going to make sure she's going to turn up at 16, but I ain't going to put her in, you know, turn the lights off, turn them off. You know, like, <laughs> like I'm not going to take her there, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let her turn all the way up. You know, like, and then and sa and same thing, like I said, for uh, funerals and things like that, like, it's a, it, there's a certain level I think that DJs have been, they have not been respected on because they're having a DJ has to think all the time. Like people just think he up, he, she up there playing records. It's like, I am literally feeling the energy mm -hmm. in this whole space. Yep. It could be, t it could be 20 people, 200 people, 250,000 people. Mm -hmm. And I'm responsible for that. Yeah. Ain't nobody else responsible but me. Yeah. So it's like, I, that's what I'm saying, man. Put some respect on your DJ's name. If your DJ got a cash app, a Venmo, yeah. a PayPal, and you see them on their Friday night religiously just giving it to you and you turn in and you clean in the house, love on your DJ because what they do is greater than mm -hmm. spinning the record, playing a record, trying to get you involved. Like their, their, their whole being is tapped into what's going on. Yeah. And so that's that's why I'm like, man, DJs are important. Um, host, man, DJ, VJs, like people who control the energy in a space, pastors, preachers, like they, their job, there's an accountability to that job. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you guys give us life. Yeah. <laughs> you guys it's give us life, man. We yeah. couldn't, I, I personally wouldn't know what to do without you. So I appreciate you guys so mm -hmm. much. You ladies so much for doing what you do. I want to ask you this. Mm -hmm. What is the one thing you'd like to see for the DJ community? I think I know Dice, you touched on it periodically throughout our conversation today, but I just want to ask as a final question, what would you like to see for the DJ community? Hourglass? So pay. Pay, Just pay, mean, pay, to pay, DJ. To DJ. pay to DJ, pay to DJ, make it rain. I second that. I second that. And I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that requires, you know, the, the great thing about Atlanta is that we can like, I, you know, I might be in this corner of Atlanta, but I'm also cool with this DJ who does yeah. something completely different. Yeah. You know, maybe organizing that 
in a way that we can communicate, oh, what's happening over here with the, they paid you what? Mm. Excuse me? Mm. So it's what sort of unionization, you know, other oh. organizations have, mm -hmm. you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Just some, mm -hmm. some sort of structure like that, but I don't know who's going to put that together. <laughs> well, I, I mean, no, I don't, I, I, I don't know either, but um, what, one of the things I was going to say um, to both of you ladies, from a artist standpoint, with me doing like positive music, Mm -hmm. more more or less Christian hip hop and things like that, I started CHH University, which is Chu University, where all the, um, I create clothing and shirts and things like mm -hmm. that. Everything I sell goes back to the kids that are coming up underneath me. Right. But I think that DJs need more support in that area where people are like, all right, like I'll come, I'll spend the time with you. I'll tell you what you need to do. I'll show you what you need to do. But people need to give back and, and put money back into the DJ's pocket mm -hmm. because honestly, every club that puts out a flyer, the second thing they do is get the DJ. Like, like, like it's not even yeah. a it's not even a thought. It's like, oh, I'm gonna throw a party. Who gonna be the DJ? Like, it's not about who's gonna be the host or who's coming in. It's like party, DJ, and it's like the DJ. You need to pay your DJs mm -hmm. and I don't even think about it because honestly the more you give to your DJ the more they're gonna think about what they're gonna bring to that party yeah and that's what yeah. that's what you want they say 10 people will go tell 10 people either it was good or bad mm-hmm mm -hmm. that's what you good do. party good party bad party good DJ bad DJ mm -hmm. yeah and then the, and then those 10 people go and tell 10 more people and so, so it's on like, and so on <laughs> come on now so it's like it, invest in the person that yeah. you're trusting yeah, your people with them. absolutely, yeah. absolutely, you know? absolutely. Pay the DJ and the yep. DJ, and I, I promise you, if I could have every DJ on this live right now, they will tell you the DJ is the last to get paid. Mm -hmm. They want to pay the artists. Yeah, you want to pay. You want to pay the people that host this. You want to pay the uh, rappers that came and run a, like they Ooh, don't that, took all. That just... they Come on now. That, that reminded me of a nightmare that I just uh, had. Excuse girl, they, they don't, <laughs> yes. Yeah. They don't, yeah, they're going to run with the DJ mic and blame the DJ that they high as wasn't high enough. And it's like, bruh, pay the DJ first. Like, mm -hmm. the DJ is literally the, the um, foundation yeah. for your party. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. foundation of your party. So it's like, um, anyway, I, that, listen, that, that, that goes across the board. I had a nightmare with an agency. <laughs> uh, I didn't get, I did the gig in December. I ended up getting paid in May, uh, amidst Ooh. all the COVID mess. And it was a huge event, probably my biggest, highest paying event. Um, and it was such a struggle to get respect, Ooh. even though leading up to it and during it, mm. the communication was perfect because they needed me so much. Mm. They had me DJ three separate spaces mm. in one night oh, wow. they had celebrity appearances they had you know and i'm like i know they got paid it's before they even stepped in the room yeah oh, and it just took so much like i had to you know put on you know put on my big girl suit yeah. i had to get you know say i'm getting lawyers involved just to get, get money paid. that was owed to me wow that, and that was such a pivotal part of the entire event and wow. Yeah, it, it goes across the board, not just from the house party or the wedding, but even to the high, high ups. They need us, and that respect still isn't there. Mm. Um, pay the DJ, stop playing. Yeah. Play, pay the <laughs> DJ, put it in your budget. If you don't have it in the budget, you don't have budget. You don't have any exactly. reason to have music. Mm -hmm. Then just yep. go mm -hmm. play your um, playlist. <laughs> but don't mm -hmm. have talented people in the space, and you're not going to pay for them. Hourglass, mm -hmm. how can people find you? How yes. can the people find you? Yes, uh, djhourglass.com is the website, um, DJ Hourglass on Instagram. I'm really heavy on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash DJ underscore Hourglass. Mm -hmm. um, nice. My collective work crew, that's W-E-R-C mm -hmm. underscore crew. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We are really active. We've got our three brands, Wine Global. We're doing an event next Sunday. Uh, the Groove ATL, our r &B brand. Yep, and yep, now, yep. It's weathered yep. and covered. So the Groove ATL is really active on Twitch. We're doing weekly uh, mm. Groove Lounge shows. So mm. just follow me and you can kind of, you know, find out the whole universe of work. I sure am. Nice. Following yeah. our glass. Yay. Dice. Thank you. Where can the people find you? No. Come on, Dice. It's, 
it, it's the same thing, just like Hourglass. Dice Gamble on everything. Yeah. So Dice Gamble, Dice Gamble dot com, Dice Gamble, Dice Gamble on Instagram, Dice Gamble on Twitter, Dice Gamble on Facebook. Like, if you're following me, you're gonna see what I see. Like, mm -hmm. I know uh, Chu Chu University is where I get to teach artists and mentor and things like that. But if you're if you're following just Dice Gamble, you're gonna see every time I post something about the school, about the store. And things like that, mm -hmm. you know, taking over Chicago because that's where I am. So mm -hmm. I'm like, Chicago about to get the ATL treatment. <laughs> so um, I love it, you know. But just follow me, you know, yeah. like on pick your platform, and and I'm there. I'm gonna yeah. post. You're gonna see what I'm doing, and support the ladies. Like honestly, it's 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 a thing. I mean, I wish it wasn't a thing. You know, it's almost like. You know the Trump Biden thing. I wish it wasn't a thing, mm -hmm. but it's like women not getting the support that they deserve. You know, um, I remember, and I'll keep this short. But my bishop is Bishop C. L. Carter, First Missionary Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia. So it's like if y'all ever want to go see a real bishop who loves the Lord, go holler at Bishop Carter. He licensed me, but he was saying one day about the respect that people don't put on women's name, knowing that they were your first teacher. For the first 40 weeks of your life, they gave you everything you needed, you know, and even after you're born, typically women are your, they're, they're your protector, they're your provider. Mm. But then something happens, you know, where you just kind of forget that. And it's like, but the, but the ladies have been leading out since, since inception. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like, put some respect on that, show us some love, you know, like, and even for me, I had to go give my mom back some love because I was like, man, I didn't realize what she did. You know, like until I start becoming a woman and walking and I was like, man, she sacrificed so much. Yeah. Like she said no so much, you know, like she gave so much, but I didn't understand it until I started walking and, and really coming into my womanhood. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I had to go back and just be like, man, the things you did for me, you know, like right. I didn't even, I didn't even understand it was a thing to be a woman where your strength has to be stronger than a male because there is an expectation of you, you know, and there is temptation and, and trials that you go through that men don't go through. Yeah. You know, so it's like you, you know, I can't pick the stronger sex. A lot of times people are like, oh, men are stronger. What would you, I'm sitting here like, Mm, I want to mm -hmm. see even my husband right now when he get a little cramp in his side I'll be like bro I go through that once a month <laughs> <laughs> once a month <laughs> and he be in there crying you clowny days and I just shake my head like yeah, y'all need to put yeah, some respect. Yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> He's no Ooh. idea. Say <laughs> he has you no idea. Huh? <laughs> because, what? Huh? I can't even call off work. I can't act like I got a problem or attitude. I can't act like I'm in pain. Yeah. I, can't act, I can't act like I want to go sit in the corner and cry. Because, and, and I can't fuss because now I'm the angry black woman. Right. So it's like, like we, we, the stuff we take and how well we are able to be poised and still do a job like a DJ or a host or a, you know, like, like y'all done made that up. So pay me. <laughs> moral huh? of the story. Yeah. The pay moral me. of the story is pay. Otherwise, pay me. show me the eyeball <laughs> dice. Show me the eyeball. <laughs> 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 Listen, I want to thank you, ladies. This was a very insightful and fun loving conversation. I thank you both for taking the time this afternoon to talk to us. And again, we just wanted to be transparent to help other people. And just, yeah. you know, if you have a dream, if you want to be a DJ, there's so many people that are discovering their talents now during mm -hmm. this pandemic and being sheltered in place. If you have a dream or a goal, if music is your love, go for it. You know, go for it. Do it. Mm. But be yeah. genuine about it. You know, make sure yeah. you're playing music that not only you will enjoy, but other people will enjoy too, right? You mm. can't, unfortunately, you can't be selfish in that space. It's all about the vibe, the energy yeah. in the room, because you give life. You, you temporarily mm -hmm. allow us to forget about whatever was heavy on our mind. 
You make mm-hmm. us feel good. You make us want to dance. You make us want to sing. You make us feel mm-hmm. sexy. You make us feel mm-hmm. vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You make us feel thankful. You, there's so many feelings and emotions that you ladies give us through music. And I tip my hat to you and I thank you. And I want to mm-hmm. encourage you and all the other lady DJs that are out there. I haven't done a show like this in a, a couple of years. I thought it was time. It was Come time that I bring the ladies <laughs> back into space. And we just talk about the world. Of, of lady DJs and what you ladies bring to the table every time you press play. So I just want to say now. thank you. Yeah. Much continued success in everything mm. that you do. You guys <laughs> stay you. well. I want to just thank our, our sponsor for today. Our show was powered today by Lisa Lee Artistry. That okay, is correct. Lisa. Yeah, Lisa's a bad artist and friend hey, of mine. Hey. She's doing some great <laughs> things. So if you want a piece done, feel free to go check out Lisa Lee Artistry on Facebook and on Instagram and make sure you cop that piece today. I I want to thank our listeners. I want to thank uh, Get Live Radio, who's got us broadcasting in the UK, Germany, and Paraguay. I want to thank WDJY 99.1 FM in Metro Atlanta, covering Dallas, Hiram, Powder Springs, and Douglasville. Shouts out to the On Channel, a subscribe channel that plays Real Chicks Rock. Eh, we're there. We're streaming there. Thank you so much for allowing us to be in that space. And last but not least, I want to thank Beat Break Radio, FM.com. That's where Dice and I are. Yay! <laughs> and that's where we met. I think that's a great station. Shouts out to Sean Garvey. He's doing some wonderful things there. Thank you, Status Network, for letting me hang out here for today. I also want to let the listeners know that we are doing a webinar. Real Chicks Rock is doing a webinar for all you business owners. I hear the millennials. I hear the people out there that are scared and don't know how to file taxes, don't know the importance of managing a marketing budget. They don't have a business plan or a strategy. They don't have any kind of financial budget set in place. So December, Saturday, December 5th at 1030, you need to sign up and register for that so that we have some speakers and some people in the place that can help you be a better you as a business owner. Why wait in 2001? 21, you can get the knowledge and power and tools that you need now. So sign up. It's on Eventbrite. Make sure you sign up for that. It's about 90 minutes. It'll change your life. It'll be some nice. some keys to success that you need. Regardless of what the business model is, sign up. Make sure that you know what it takes. You're doing the right thing to be a success, successful entrepreneur and business owner. That is my time for today. Mm. You know Thank me, you. Real Chicks Thank Rock. You, Michelle. you Thank guys you, are Michelle. welcome. You know you can find me. I am everywhere. I'm on Instagram, yeah, Facebook, Twitter. What? Check out what? the Real Chicks Rock <laughs> uh, website. Facebook, Go out there, Twitter. get your mask, Real get a t shirt. Yo, oh, show the love. A t-shirt. Yeah, oh, get the t-shirt. Yeah, you, yeah, the yeah. T-shirt. Realchicksrock.com. You guys go. Until next time, you guys be well. Take care and continue to rock on. Bye. Thank you. Peace. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you, ladies. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Have a good okay. one. Sweet. You're the best girl. All right, Pleasure DJ. Pleasure meeting you. Yes. You too.